Hi, my name is Frank Gresham. I'm with the Chronic Pain Center. Kathy Faust asked me to talk to you folks a little bit about what I do and how I help uh, my patients to get rid of their chronic pain. I am a myofascial trigger point therapist. Myofascial means connective muscle. Uh, so when muscles are tight, muscles will refer pain. They cause about 93% of chronic pain in the United States right now. Let me give you an example of what happens with muscles and why they're causing pain. Let's say your muscle is real tight like this power cord right now, but we're going to stretch the muscles out and release it. And we can pull it to its normal length here, a nice straight length. But watch what happens as I bring the cord back. Look how it starts to turn up and knot a little bit. It still has the memory of where I had it wrapped around. So I try to find, I have a protocol, I try to find why your muscles are always staying tight. You can take a walk and you're going to stretch your leg muscles, but if you have something wrong with your shoes or you have a hip height discrepancy, those muscles are going to get tight as you use them incorrectly. So my goal is to find out why you're hurting. I use a protocol by, uh, by Dr. Janet Travell. Let's see if you can see this. I'm trying to make sure the glare's not on there. This is a pie chart. Here is your pain in the middle. This was my pain in the middle. 13 years ago. I had migraines and back pain. I look for my patients and see what is perpetuating their pain. One of the things I'll look at is nutrition. I will look to make sure that I'll ask the patient if they are eating correctly, if they are eating protein every three and a half hours. Are they doing a lot of sugar? And they go, well, what do you mean? How much is too much? Actually, more than two two teaspoons of sugar at one time, which is eight grams, is too much sugar, because it's going to, sugar will hyper irritate your muscles, so that means it's really gonna hurt them. And then also it's gonna suppress your immune system for four to six hours. So if you have something else going on, uh, like an illness, whether you have lupus, or just a bad cold or whatever, by drinking uh, a soda or uh, eating a lot of ice cream, that's actually gonna shut your immune system down or suppress it for four to six hours. This is a uh, drink that one of my patients uh, brought in and she said, look at this, Frank, it's got antioxidants in it, it's got pomegranate, this is a really good company and uh, I think this is good and it's only 170 calories per bottle. And I turned it over and I looked at it and I said, wow, how are you feeling? She goes, well, I still hurt. And I go, how many of these a day do you have? And she goes, well, one or two. This has 44 grams of sugar. Now, I had to check this twice because I thought I did it too much. Uh, the first time as far as measuring it. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. This is how much sugar is in this drink. You can't do this and expect to be pain free and expect your body to heal. So again, why are you hurting? This sometimes is a big deal. I've had patients that have been drinking 10 Cokes a day. I said before I even can work on you, you have to get off the sugar. And they get upset at me because they want me to work them right away and you know help them feel better. Surprisingly enough, they will come back in a week or two later after they've gotten off the sugar, and they're amazed at how they feel because their body's able to start healing. So another part of the protocol that I use is is I check hip height. I want to make sure that when you stand, that you don't want to have, uh, have your hips uneven, which in turn will show one shoulder is usually a little higher than the other because you're operating at a, an angle, you're leaning, and your, your muscles are always going to be working against each other as opposed to with each other. So what I do is I check your hip height standing and sitting. I will use a heel lift. I have one on my right side that allows me to stand nice and straight. My hips are level, my spine is straight, and my muscles are working together on both sides. I don't get fatigued. I have a lot of, uh, especially ladies that come in that go, oh, just by the afternoon, I'm so fatigued. I can't, you know, I'm so weak. That's because you've used up all your energy when you're crooked and you're trying, your body's trying to right yourself. It's, and it's just, it can't happen. It's not going to happen. You get tired, you get fatigued, you want to have some coffee to try and, you know, get the energy back and you're just running your body down. So I use this. Another important thing that I use with my patients is I ask them to bring posture pictures in from home. Now, sometimes people have trouble with this. They're going, why do you want to see you know, what I look like sleeping? I don't have to see you actually sleeping. I need, just need to see you on top of your covers, uh, 
with your pillow, dressed in your regular everyday street clothes, but I need to see what positions you're assuming. This young lady was kind enough to uh, let me use her pictures, and when she came in to see me, she was, uh, for five years, she'd been in pain, I believe. She would had nauseousness all the time, vertigo, back pain, migraines. This was how she studied. I hope you can see that. I'm trying to give you, there's no glare there. But this was how she studied. So what I asked her, I said, what do you think your muscles are remembering when, you, when you're sitting like this? They re were remembering to keep her short like this, closed in the front, the head's forward. That's putting a lot of strain on the muscles that are causing headaches and neck pain. So we corrected that and we corrected her sleep position as well. She was sleeping with her arms over her head. You can't do that. I used to sleep with my arms overhead. And when you do that, I'm shortening up the trapezius, which is a big muscle in the back and attaches up to the back of the head, and this muscle right here. These are the two main headache muscles. So when I was sleeping like this, my muscles were remembering to be short, and then when I go to put my arms down in the morning, they'd fight against that because they'd been tight all night. They didn't want to be pulled out of there, which in turn caused migraines. So what I do is I find the why of, you, you know, of your pain. I do this protocol first. I don't just work on you if you came in with a migraine and said, oh, here, I'm going to release the muscles in the neck. That's not going to happen because that could cause some uh, overstress the muscles because they're not ready to be worked on yet. First, we have to correct the per uh, perpetuating factors, why you're hurting. So once we do that, then you come back in uh, a week after correcting your sleep postures, your sitting postures, then your muscles have started to relax and get into a more neutral position. I can work on you. Usually two to four visits, we see some really good results. Now the lady that developed this protocol was Dr. Janet Travell. She was President Kennedy's White House physician. She, um, she was a savant at this. this was, she's, a, she's a genius at this. All these pain patterns that you see behind me on the wall are all medically documented pain patterns. Um, if you can see, this is a common back pain problem right here that goes across the low back. People think, well, I've got to strengthen my core to get that uh, pain to go away. Actually, you're shortening up the muscles that are um, contributing to that. You actually want to stretch the muscles out. You'll see so many videos on YouTube that show you to bring your knees to your chest. I would tell you that's the complete opposite thing to do because if those um, stretches work, the ones where you're bringing your knee to your chest, we wouldn't have a chronic pain problem right now with uh, sciatica and low back pain. Once this is released and all the muscles, the, as I call it, the whole functional unit in the torso are released and you're opening up your front area, the pain starts to disappear. Um, if you go to somebody that says they do trigger point therapy and they just start working on you right away, I don't think they're doing it the correct way. I think the proper way is you've got to find the why the pain. You've got to identify the perpetuating factors. When I do this, I have a very, very high success rate with people. Um, you can uh, Google my name, the Chronic Pain Center in Springfield, uh, and see the different testimonials that I have from people that were, they were for years in pain and they couldn't, uh, they didn't know what to do. Somehow they found me and they're pain free now. It, it works with a high percentage of folks. So find the why of your pain. That's what I want to try to do to help with this uh, documentary that Kathy's making. My goal is to help as many of you get your life back like I have it. Um, I love what I do and it's fascinating to me how quickly the body will recover if we do the right things. Pills will cover it up. It's not going to fix the why. Sometimes I know it helps with the pain, but let's find out why you're hurting. Uh, if you have any questions for me, you can reach me at thechronicpaincenter.com. That's my website. It also has a pain symptom checker on the top right-hand side of that. And you can go in there and click on the body parts, and you'll see most of these pain patterns right here. If you can identify your pain patterns uh, on, the, on the website, that's muscle-related. That's something that you can get help with. Uh, I can try to help you find a good therapist uh, where you live if they're around there. Thank you for your time, and uh, Kathy, thank you for letting me do this. Uh, enjoy your day.